The electric car craze is genuine and may not wear out anytime soon. In the past 10 years, we've observed immense enthusiasm for electric vehicles from governments, automakers, and consumers alike. Governments are enacting expensive subsidy programs, developing regulatory initiatives to manage an electric vehicle and support charging infrastructure installations. Countries like France and the United Kingdom have even announced prohibiting the sale of new fossil fuel vehicles after 2040. Previously, automakers were skeptical about electric cars, but today, we see manufacturers investing billions of dollars into their production. By 2022, there will be at least 127 different all-electric vehicle models in the US. So, is the euphoria of this stature justified by the state of economic, technology, and financial realities? Let's find out. Enjoying this video so far? Subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to receive notifications about our latest uploads. Thanks! Now let's get back to the video. Just six years ago, it was largely assumed that efficient fossil fueled vehicles would have a cost advantage over EVs. At the time, EVs futures depended on a combination of factors, such as high gasoline prices, high government subsidies, and dramatic improvements in battery technology. However, the outlook is much more promising and positive today. But still, several questions remain unanswered. Would EVs be competitive against traditional gasoline-fueled cars in the next 10 years? Will we have a cost-effective charging infrastructure? Is it even possible to overcome the economic and financial challenges that the need to install charging stations poses? Although battery costs have come down considerably over the years, the challenges surrounding designing and operating an economically viable charging infrastructure to power EV batteries are still there. Let's dig deep and understand the charging infrastructure needed to charge EVs and why it is such a big challenge for governments and automakers. There are three primary levels of chargers for EVs. The first level is a standard 120 volt plug, the same type of plug that you would use for home appliances. This type of charger works slowly, and it would take several nights or between roughly 20 to 40 hours to charge an EV battery to almost full capacity. The second level is a 240 volt charger that generally provides up to 25 miles of charge in an hour, so the full time charge is reduced to 8 hours or possibly less. For home use, level 2 chargers use the same outlet that you would require for electric ovens or clothes dryers. The level 3 direct current fast chargers take much less time to charge a battery up to 80% of its capacity. It may just take 30 minutes. However, at the moment, only level 2 chargers are widely available. The EV charging problem is indeed a grave one. The cost differences between the charger types cannot be overlooked, as in the near future we will need many, many more charging stations to power EV batteries. Currently, the number of charging stations is alarmingly low. There are around 220,816 Department of Energy approved public charging stations in the entire USA. So let's suppose if we have to install level 2 charging stations, each charging unit's component will cost somewhere between $2,500 to $7,200, and for a DC fast charger, the cost of installation will shoot up to $20,000 to $35,800 per unit. The decision regarding which type of stations should be installed relies on balancing the installation cost and consumer convenience. Level 2 charger development has remained a coordinated process with most major automakers using the same charge port model, except for Tesla. Tesla vehicles require an adapter to connect, but there are some serious compatibility issues with DC fast chargers. There are three different kinds of DC fast chargers used by automakers today. These include the SEA combined charging system, which a majority of manufacturers are using. Then there's the Chad Mio that Mitsubishi and Nissan are using. And then you have the mighty Tesla supercharger that only Tesla drivers can use. So this lack of compatibility is an issue of concern and gives gasoline based vehicles a competitive advantage as these have universal vehicle access to gas stations. So. This compatibility issue is proving to be a significant obstacle to widespread EV adoption. Enjoying the video? Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. 
Thanks. The availability of charging infrastructure is another critical issue that can affect a country's economy adversely. It is a widely known fact that EVs are charged at electrical outlets rather than refueled at conventional gas stations. Currently, many EV owners have to charge their cars and garages using an exclusive wall-mounted charger. This arrangement is feasible for many users, as, on average, a person drives no more than 29 miles in a day. This distance is well within the range of EVs that we have today, as these can travel between 150 and 250 miles on a single charge. But that's where difficulties arise. Firstly, EV owners who live in apartments seldom have a dedicated garage equipped with charging infrastructure to keep their battery-powered vehicles functional. Installing the infrastructure will prove cost prohibitive for most building managers, and the electric costs incurred will be higher since EV charging consumes a lot more energy than other everyday residential appliances. So building managers will have to create a mechanism to accurately and efficiently monitor EV charging to ensure that every EV driver pays for their electricity usage. Secondly, EVs require an expanded charging infrastructure because long distance trips would not be possible without multiple stops for charging the battery. Research from the International Council on Clean Transportation revealed that considering the increasing EV ownership rate, at least 10,000 more charging stations will be needed to support intercity EV traveling by 2025. So, on longer trips, EV owners may experience range anxiety, which means that they fear that the car will run out of power before reaching a compatible charging station. Range and charging availability are two issues that have restricted the uptake of EVs so far. A 2018 survey from the Harris polling firm concluded that 58% of the respondents claimed that running out of power was the top reason for not buying an EV, and 49% names the lack of charging stations. There are different kinds of home charging equipment and commercial charging station configurations available today, but there's no clear winner in today's current scenario. So. The question remains the same, who will develop a commercially profitable plan to charge EVs? Will it be electric utility firms, automakers, third-party investors, or maybe even equipment manufacturers? Ironically, none of them have implemented a sustainable long-term business plan so far. Without an accessible EV charging infrastructure that can charge the vehicle in a reasonable period, it would be difficult for motorists to purchase an EV. So if governments want to make EVs a commercially successful venture, they need to focus on developing an accessible, user-friendly, and most importantly, cost-effective charging infrastructure. Despite that, we have so many charging technologies available, and many more in the pipeline. There's currently no consensus on an adequate infrastructure and less certainty. Given these issues, owners of gasoline-powered vehicles are less likely to switch to an EV if the charging process is expensive, complex, uncertain, or time-consuming. Although we see many commercial fast charging stations emerging at locations across Europe, the US, and Asia, in most cases these facilitate the car's sale more than serving as a commercial standalone charging system. To deploy these facilities at scale, Automakers or governments need to make charging stations accessible and compatible with all EV models. Now, let's check out the cost analysis. EV users will have to pay for two costs. The fixed cost for using the equipment to recharge the car and the power consumed, which will be variable. Fixed costs associated with different types of EV vehicle supply equipment comprise of three main components. The equipment's installation cost and, where relevant, the site preparation costs, utility system upgrades like new transformers, and charging equipment costs. Furthermore, utilization rates are the main determinants of profitability with EV charging stations in the absence of an indirect or alternative revenue source. No form of commercial charging will be competitive with home charging under TOU rates. For higher levels of variable income, each additional kilowatt hour's marginal profit will offset a decreasing proportion of the charging station's total cost. Moreover, gasoline refueling is a quick process from a consumer's perspective, whereas charging an EV takes time. People may have to wait in queues due to a lack of expanded charging infrastructure, so any additional time consumed when charging the EV will be considered an inconvenience for the driver. This can seriously deter new buyers from investing in EVs. 
So, the problem lies in the unavailability of widespread charging stations and the impracticality involved in the charging process itself. If these two issues are combined, the rise of EVs seems to be the beginning of a grave economic and consumerism crisis. Plus, with the growth in EV penetration, some utilities will need to invest in upgrading the distribution infrastructure, especially on stations where demand is higher than supply. The investment rate and pattern will be influenced by the tariff schedule design and the smart charging system's commercial penetration to optimize the system's temporal demand. So costs will be higher for level 3 or above fast charging stations. Such as, these facilities will need a new transformer that will cost $30,000 to $40,000 alone. How can one overlook additional expenses, such as installing commercial EVSC towers, electronic interfaces, payment systems, network connectivity, and more? Hence, we can assume that the electric car charging problem is here to stay unless favorable and feasible new policies, tariffs, and costs are introduced. Automakers must collaborate to make a cohesive system for recharging EV batteries. But what do you think? Share your thoughts and experiences with EV charging in the comment sections down below. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.